you were to ask me what does it mean to be good at acting, I'd have tons of different answers. There are a variety of different ways to answer this question that depend on what kind of acting you enjoy. Of them all, I feel as though this is a definition most people can agree with. Good acting is making a character believable. When you think of some of the greatest actors and actresses of all time, you think of Jack Nicholson, Meryl Streep, Daniel Day-Lewis, Jodie Foster, Denzel Washington, the list goes on. Someone you don't typically hear about in that list is Ryan Gosling. I look at Ryan Gosling as the poster child for good acting because of his ability to transform into the character in a subtle and hypnotizing way in almost all of his films. Let me backtrack a little. When I think of a good character, I think of characters who I don't associate with the person who played said character. Just look at Hannibal Lecter, The Bride, and Forrest Gump, just to name a few. I'm not thinking about Anthony Hopkins, Uma Thurman, or Tom Hanks, I see only the character. This is a trick that Ryan Gosling has been able to pull off in almost every role he has been in. I'm well aware that this could just be me, but I've taken notice that every time I watch a Ryan Gosling movie, I forget that Ryan Gosling was in it by the time the credits roll. One could say an exception would be Crazy Stupid Love, where Gosling plays someone not too different from himself. With that being said, didn't Ryan still do a pretty good job? You could also say that Ryan plays a similar moody and purposely handsome character in all of his films, so isn't he technically always going to be like that? And that's true, that is a somewhat consistent character for Gosling. But when you look at his earliest work like The Believer, where he plays a Jewish neo-Nazi, someone who is far from relaxed, let alone appealing, it becomes evident that that couldn't be further from the truth. On top of that, you have Lars and the Real Girl, where Ryan seems to play one of the most socially awkward characters I've ever seen in the movies. My point is that no matter the script or the character, Ryan seems to do his job as an actor to completely become that person and give off the right emotion we want. So how exactly does he do this? The answer is movement. Something I've noticed about Ryan's work is that rarely are his roles very talkative. He usually plays a somewhat mysterious yet totally understandable character. It says a lot that someone like him who is limited to talking and makeup as a way of expressing a character is still able to become another person completely, and I feel he does so through his movement. Take these two shots, first one being from Lars and the Real Girl, and second from La La Land. In these two shots, Ryan is making practically the same face, a slight smile and raised eyebrows, a common face for Gosling. If you've seen both films, you know that these are two completely different emotions. The difference is the way his body moves. He blends himself into the mood of said scene without saying anything. This is a skill that's been done tons and tons of times by plenty of fantastic actors like Morgan Freeman in Shawshank Redemption, Meryl Streep in Devil Wears Prada, Brad Pitt in Fight Club, the list goes on. But what I think is special about Ryan Gosling is that he seems to pull it off in almost every film he's in. He does so in The Believer, The Notebook, Lars and the Real Girl, Drive, The Big Short, The Nice Guys, La La Land, and as of recent, Blade Runner 2049. This skill shines brightest in 2049. It felt as though this role was meant for Ryan Gosling being that most of the story was visual. Gosling has complete control and understanding of the tone throughout the duration of the movie, riding along attached to his character's development. This movie is patient and a lot of the events and significant plot points are told through visuals, so of course Ryan Gosling is going to be reserved, slow, and patient. Too often it feels as though a bad performance is blamed on the script rather than the actual actor. Harrison Ford is one of the greatest actors and people, period. We all know this. But I think we can all agree that his performance in Crystal Skull was one of the many reasons this movie did not work. Of course, the script was horrible, but if Ford was truly attached and writing the development the way he did in the original trilogy, his performance might have saved the film just a little bit. In a lot of the scenes in this film, it felt like Ford was being scared because that was the time to be scared. Not being scared because there were greater consequences to the current situation or because it was a rare conflict for him. It just felt flat. This is of course just one of the many examples of performances in film that felt like this, but my point is, Gosling always seems to have more than just a single emotion in mind when he acts. The thinner the gap between the actor and the film, the more believable the character becomes. Good acting is doing so much more than just portraying the right emotion at the right time. It's understanding the tone of the film, and understanding where a character is at in its development that makes a character compelling. Almost anyone can get in front of a camera and be sad if they are told to be sad, just look at Tommy Wiseau. The real art within being a great actor or actress is keeping things in context of the setting, the other characters, the mood, and most importantly, the story. Whenever I watch a film with Ryan Gosling in it, it never feels like I'm watching a film about Ryan Gosling playing a certain character. It feels like I'm watching a character played by Ryan Gosling.